Everfree Guardian, Chapter 9, Part 3 Struggling to keep himself in check, Nathan entered Sugarcube Corner at Fluttershy's side, looking around at the familiar setting he had rarely stepped into since that mess with the griffin. <sighs> Seems like that was only just yesterday. What? Nathan glanced at Fluttershy, shaking his head as he walked further into the sweet shop. Uh, nothing, nothing, just... Uh... The last party I went to in this place was with that girl you all were welcoming. Hopefully this one doesn't end like that. Fluttershy's disdained look softened at the reminder of what happened with Gilda. How broken both of them were when they either came out or were found in the bathroom. I remember that. I still can't believe Gilda would do something like that. She's one of Rainbow Dash's closest friends back when she was a filly. Rainbow Dash? The blue Pegasus friend of yours? Mm -hmm. When she saw Gilda in the bathroom, she initially blamed you for what happened. She was... well, you can imagine how angry she was. Angry? Fluttershy, I'd expect anyone to be on a warpath after finding your friend like that, no matter what the situation was. Did she ever find out what really happened? Fluttershy nodded as they passed by the front counter, heading to the party area where everyone attending the brunch was mingling. Yes. Applejack told her not long after you told us. She... took it even worse. But she doesn't blame you anymore for that. She realized that you were just defending yourself. In hindsight, I probably should have focused on leaving the bathroom and getting back into the crowd rather than fighting Gilda. I know I went overboard with how I dealt with her. Nathan rubbed his head, as a small bout of that strange vision sent a sharp pang through his head. I don't really know what happened then. One moment Gilda was on top of me, and then the next. I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that Applejack's assessment of me wasn't too far off. He brought his hand down as the pain waned and his vision returned to normal. Post-traumatic stress. I can't say that's too surprising. He shook his head as they made their way through the crowd of ponies, eventually stumbling onto a nervous purple unicorn. Upon seeing them, Fluttershy's attitude brightened. Twilight, there you are! Fluttershy? The unicorn turned to the duo, exhaling a breath that she had been holding in. With a smile creasing onto her face, the two mares shared a short hug. Oh, so glad you could make it. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten. Well, I was a bit tied up on the way here. Fluttershy glanced over her shoulder at Nathan, opting Twilight to look towards him as well. You're the guy we met back at Sakura's hut. You mean the one you broke into and trashed? Fluttershy elbowed him as Twilight's smile turned sheepish. Um, uh, yeah. We're sorry about all of that. I didn't really believe any of the gossip up until that point. I took all of what we saw in there as evidence of the stories told around Ponyville and was primarily focused on getting Apple Bloom back. Apple Bloom? I sent her back home before she even got to Sakura's. Wait, what? Nathan rolled his wrist as he walked to the side, looking into the party room as he spoke. Yeah, she tried to follow me in, but I caught her just before she went into the poison joke herself. Luckily, there weren't any monsters left on the path she took to chase me, so I turned her around and sent her back to Sweet Apple Acres before making my way to Sakura's place. Uh, oh, we were wondering how she got there when she went into the Everfree the last time we saw her that day. She giggled a bit to herself, before holding out a hand to the human. Anyway, we didn't formally introduce ourselves when we first met. My name is Twilight Sparkle. What's your name? Nathan took her hand into his own as he faced her. Nathan Schmidt. Sorry if I seem a bit on edge right now. Little Miss Secrets over here decided to lure me here without telling me what the hell was going on, and I almost got into a scrap with the guards outside because of it. Twilight blinked at him, then looked to Fluttershy for answers. I'll tell you later, Twilight. Anyways, what's going on here? I thought all of Akosira's princesses were going to be here. The three began walking towards the party, meshing in with the crowd as they ventured for a specific table near the back. Oh, you mean Princess Luna and Princess Cadence? Some emergency meeting came up back in Canterlot that required their attention, so they couldn't attend this brunch today. Princess Alessia's still here, though, and I'm excited for y'all to meet her. Fluttershy tilted her head as she eyed Twilight. I thought she already met us. She has, and she's read about you in my letters, but this is the first time she spends any real time with you. 
I want you all to make a good first impression. Well, I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. I mean, this isn't anything overly formal. It's just a casual get-together, right? It's not you I'm worried about when it comes to meeting her Fluttershy. Twilight nodded towards Nathan as they went along, the two getting slightly ahead of them as he slowed a bit. His mind began pulsing again, his vision flashing orange and blue like a few seconds ago, but more intensely. Rubbing his head, Nathan looked up towards one of the empty tables, the same human figure from before sitting down in one of the chairs. The figure was female, and had characteristics that were unlike anyone from his prior dreams. Judging by the way she was sitting, she was as tall as him, if not a little shorter. She had long, raven-black hair, a darker skin complexion, and was dressed in a striped tank top and skin-tight sweats. Her eyes were directed at him, and glowed with that alternating blue and orange light. Nathan... The vision flashed away before he could respond, making him stumble slightly as the pain faded once more, and his vision returned to normal. Looking around, the figure was gone, and he was left with the ponies walking around him. Was... that... was... He rubbed his eyes, groaning at the strain they were facing from this small series of hallucinations. Shaking it off, he turned back towards Fluttershine Twilight, catching up with them as they got to the table they were looking for. Mr. and Mrs. Cake were there too, addressing the guest of honor for the brunch. Anything else we can get for you, dearie? I mean, esteemed guest. Everything is fine, Mr. and Mrs. Cake. I must say, this tea is quite delicious. Might I request the recipe for it to serve back in Kenterla Castle? But of course, quick carrot, it's on the top shelf near the back counter. I'm on it, honey bun. Carrot Cake sped away from the table, much to the amusement of their guest. Approaching the table, Fluttershy and Twilight took a seat near her, while Nathan placed himself in between them. Looking past the purple unicorn, Nathan caught his first sight of the grand ruler of this land, Princess Celestia, a mare taller than the rest by a large margin. She easily doubles everyone around her in heights, and her assets match a mare of her size. Nathan thought that he had grown used to the good looks and nice bodies of every person he came across in this world, but holy shit. If some pony like Rarity can make a stallion swoon with just the bat of an eye, this princess could do it with a mere glance. Her coat was a pure white, while her mane and tail flowed with some sort of magical power. Shades of pink, purple, blue, and green swirled within the veil of that magic, giving a sort of ethereal appearance to her grace. She had the usual royal ornaments that he had been expecting from someone like her, but what caught his eye was the fact that she had both a horn and wings rather than one or the other. Was she some kind of super pony or something? If she held the traits of all three types of ponies seen in Equestria, then calling her the most powerful pony in Equestria may not be too far off from the truth. Her attire consisted of Roman-style clothing. Namely, it was a ceremonial dress that was as white as her fur, though had demarcations in certain areas like the sleeves and the shoulders. Overall, she had the beauty and authority of a true goddess, though Nathan hardly believed she was one. Like any pony in this land, if she bled, he can kill her. It'll just be really difficult to do so if it ever became necessary. Haven't met a person for three seconds before you're trying to figure out a way to end their life. Nathan jolted slightly as he turned towards Fluttershy, seeing the figure from earlier was sitting in her place. How do you do it? How do you hold it all inside? Your face is covered so it never reveals your pain. <laughs> no one would know the guilt you feel. Never know your darkest and deepest thoughts. <laughs> she reached out placing a hand on her shoulder. The cracks are forming, Nathan. The sins are seeping in, and the memories that haunt you are returning. Nathan's vision flashed once more, and the figure was gone, replaced with a worried Fluttershy. Are you okay? Nathan turned his head away from her, his arms slumped onto the table as he stared down at his hands. I... Uh, yes, I'm fine. Fluttershy knew he was lying, but didn't bother to call him out. Not now, not in front of the princess. Speaking of which, it seemed her attention was now on them, having finished her fun with the cakes. Eyeing both her and Nathan, she started with her, as Nathan was recuperating from... whatever had perturbed him. And what about you, dear? Fluttershy's your name, correct? 
I understand from Twilight's letters about you that you enjoy taking care of small woodland creatures near the Everfree. Yes, I love to take care of animals. As do I, Miss Fluttershy. As princess, I care about all creatures, great and small. She turned her eyes to Nathan, shifting some to address him fully. Oh man, putting him right on the spot. Can't imagine that headache is going to help him with a conversation, though. Anywho, let's get on to our sweet donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Star630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suru, Ryan, and Iron Sky. Matchbook 109, Jock TF, Darkside, Raiden, Arles, Black Moonar, Pastel Skies, Alston Rollins, Rollins, Stu Hex, Sir Brother Mordred, Armor Gun, Lyra, Ruinside 952, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Rice, Hulshad, and Malouge 88, Chancer, Crust, Big Smoke, Day 69, Bobcat, JJF, Murder Princess, and many more beautiful people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.